Good morning. Welcome to Yuma Christian Church Facebook. I think it's amazing that you have showed up today. I, you, if you've been with us for this last seven weeks, you know we've been we've been looking at the the body of Christ. We've been looking at Paul's favorite word picture for the church. Now it seems to me appropriate that maybe we would take a few minutes to to look at what it is that we have learned. One of the things I love about our church is that everything's kind of connected. We take pretty seriously the Word of God, and, and, and maybe that's an understatement. But everything's kind of connected. We, we, we build on our lessons. And so if you didn't get a chance to see one of them and something was interrupted or you didn't, just know that you can go back. There's a seven-week series called The Body of Christ. I am, you are. We are the body of Christ. And and so uh, we've been building on that word picture. We've looked at the Gospel of Luke. Uh, We've we've watched the church kind of released into the world. We have watched and looked at uh, a lot of different things. In fact, I just want to review a a few of them. In lesson one, we looked at the, the body is the plan. We recognize that, that, the, that the work of redemption is not just a personal relationship with Jesus, but it is a relationship with others. God, God wanted to heal the brokenness between him and us. He also wants to heal the brokenness between us and others. And that's part of the body of Christ. That's when we're in Christ, we are in the body. It's not a extra decision. It's not a second thing I need to do. It's not the the downside of the upside. <laughs> the church is God's gift to build us and help strengthen our relationship with Him, but also to accomplish the work that He has for us as families and as 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 Christian men or Christian women. It, it's it's how God. Well, I said in lesson two. We called it, it's how, the, how, the, how we survive. It's how we thrive. In lesson two, if you remember, we, we looked at, at the, what, the power of belonging. It's a powerful thing. It was powerful to the disciples. Even before what we now call as church, Jesus was connecting them. And they recognized that they were, they, were, they called themselves the twelve, because they understood how much they needed each other. We also looked in that lesson that when Judas got separated from the group, that that he didn't he didn't do well. In fact, none of us do well when we're separated from the group. We do better when we're connected. And that's where we thrive. We looked in lesson. Three, we called it winning. And what I really meant by that was that, that we have a mission, that, that, that we were called to a mission. On the day they called Pentecost, Peter stood up and, and, the, and the Holy Spirit just connected and awakened him to how amazing grace is. And he suddenly realized that, that this grace is not just for me, it's for everybody. This, this thing that saves me is for you, for everyone. And so we watched as he, as he released that grace into, into that community that day. 3,000 people were baptized into Christ that very day. They were added to the number. We watched and we looked at the mission and we watched Peter deliver that mission at Pentecost and we recognized that the body of Christ has to be a place that we cannot get over how amazing grace is. We just can't get over grace. We have to be a place where grace just happens. That's what makes the church amazing. It's what makes people want to be a part of it. We also looked at the body of Christ is the place where people hear the truth about God's love in a language they can understand. And that means the language that they speak, the vernaculars like that we use, but it also means to be able to 
to use to use language that connects. That's a powerful truth about the church. And when we get off of that, then we're not quite so healthy. We also looked in lesson four at how the body is the starting place for all the good things God wants to do, the next things that God wants to do. The body of Christ is where we show up. And, we, and, we, and, and you're showing up right now. You show up on the blog, you show up on a YouTube, you show up on a Facebook, you show up on a, on a, on a Zoom lesson, you show up in, 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 your, in the place where your Bible is open, in the place where others are, are there to love you and to, and, to, and to share the Word of God with each other. You, you're a part of that. So show up. We talked about showing up, and we talked about serving up, and we talked about giving up. Get a part, be a part of your local church. Right now, yeah, there's a little distance between us because of, of, of we're all trying to do the right thing here in Colorado and, and other states too, I guess, I hope. But, but we'll be back. And when we are, we'll be more powerful and more strong. And if you can be here, then we want you here. But maybe you have another church. Maybe you're a part of a church somewhere else or somewhere else in our community. Get plugged into your church that's where god starts to reveal the, the 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 things that he's doing and teaching in our lives i said this and it really made a difference to me i really believe that you cannot be in a celebration of the resurrection of jesus christ on a sunday morning and walk out of there unchanged sometimes we get a little dull to that perhaps but the truth of the matter is, when you've been invited to stand in the presence of the Almighty God, when you stand shoulder to shoulder with other people and you declare His, His glory and your praises, you cannot be the same person. And, and, and that is an opportunity to be transformed. So show up. Get plugged into your local church and give to your local church. We also talked in Lesson 5 about our gifts. In Lesson 5, we recognize that we are gifted people. We've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and in that amazing, miraculous reality that we change, and we get better, and then we discover our giftedness, and God uses that in order to change our world order to change others. Then we talked about how the family is a part of the church and the church is part of the family. We recognize that from the very beginning we were partners with God in, in managing and ordering and organizing the, the, the thing that he created. That God is an ordered God. He is a, he's an organized God. This thing about organized religion, I know that religion gets a bad name, but look it up in a dictionary. It's not so bad. It just kind of means we believe in a personal God. And organized is what we are by creation. But we talked in that lesson about how the family is God's way of, 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 of merging us with his creation. On day six, he created the family. And then we find that in the church, that the church comes alongside the brokenness in the family and helps redeem it. Sometimes we just teach each other how to, how to do this thing called parenting and being a husband. And, and, and sometimes it comes that way. And sometimes it comes through actual people in the body of Christ coming in and filling up the missing places where a father's missing or a mother's missing, the church fills in that gap, brings healing to those broken hearts. That's what we do in the church. And then today, so if you're here today, we're in Lesson 7, and I'm going to keep it kind of brief because I had kind of promised that we would have an opportunity to tell some stories because I, I want you to know how much I love the church and, and I want you to, to have a chance to tell your story. So I want to say that the body of Christ is how the world is transformed. 
that's the transforming power, our collective work in the body of Christ. I found this quote. I want to, it's kind of short today, I, but I, I found this powerful quote. And uh, one of the books that I've been reading uh, uh, called uh, Rediscovering the Church. And, and um, I, I want to re- read you this in the epilogue, uh, this powerful quote. And, and then I want to tell you a little story. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell your story. It, Washington, D.C. is the center of I- incredible power. When I visited there over the years, I've ended up sitting across the table from a number of people who were yielding, wielding enormous authority and influence. And it has never ceased to be an eye-opening experience for me. But it is not but it hasn't been an eye-opening experience because of the lure of political clout. I am taken back by the power that the people in Washington don't have. Politicians can rearrange stuff on on a surface of life. They can spend money and exact legislation and draw attention to a cause, but they cannot bring fundamental transformation into the life of one individual. They can't rewrite the eternal address of a single person. They cannot order the genuine reconciliation between two estranged human beings. They can't instill character in anybody. They can't turn a selfish heart into a servant's heart, and they cannot turn a granite heart into a giving heart. And this is what our country desperately, most desperately needs. And then let me follow up with this last part. He says, my experience, they, say the authors, say my experience with the church, I've added the, they said there, this church. My experience with church has convinced me to the core of my soul that nothing on this planet is more important, more strategic, or more urgently needed than the local church. I'm referring to the authentic biblical communities that are the conduits through which Jesus Christ can rescue a world gone wry. So let's commit ourselves to praying that God would energize his people and breathe renewed life into his church. And that's us. That's you. That's me. God is transforming his world, and there is no greater work than the church. Now, there are other things that God is calling us to do, to serve in our community, to serve in Washington, D.C., or to serve in your family. God calls us to do all of that. But nothing is more powerful that you are a part of than the kingdom of God and his local church. You get to be a part of that. You are his body. That is so amazing. Now, now I want to say, I, I have gone through some stages in my life where, and I told you early on in the series, this separating things out. If, if we're the body and he is the head, it's one thing. Sometimes we want to parse it out. I'll take the, the body of Christ, but, but, but I don't want Jesus, a relation, personal relationship. Or I want a personal relationship, but I don't want a relationship with the, with the, with the body of Christ. It's, it's not two things, it's one thing. I, I used to struggle with that. I, I remember times in my life where I'd say, oh, well, you got to bring people to Jesus and then you bring them to the church. But that's not what the Bible really says. That's not what Paul's trying to say anyway. That we are intricately weaved into this body of Christ. And both of them, it's both are Christ. You look at the church, that's Jesus. You look at Jesus, that's Jesus. Do, do, do you see what I mean? Sometimes we do that. It's like I, I went for, through a stage in my life as well. Well, teach people about Jesus, but don't tell them, don't invite them to church. What? If we're the body of Christ, then Jesus gets the glory. 
when his people come and worship and when his people gather and meet, it all goes back to Jesus. So yeah, we should love our church because loving our church is part of loving Jesus. A few weeks ago, I, I put out an appeal that we would tell why we love the church or tell our story. In fact, in lesson one, I don't know if you still remember that seven weeks ago, but I said, I want to hear your story. I, I want to tell my story. I'll start with mine, and then I'm gonna, we're going to take a uh, we're going to we're going to do some video clips uh, that that uh, Jackie and Trent have put together to 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 help us to hear your story. Why why do we love the church so much? I I, I tell you my my relationship with the church has always been amazing. I I. I, I some of you have heard my long testimony. I'm just going to tell the part about the church. But I, one day back in 1979, my, my truck broke down in front of a little church out in the middle of a cornfield in Indiana. And I, and I, and I walked up to, to talk, to, to, to knock on the door of the, of the uh, parsonage. I didn't know that's what that was till later, but the parsonage. And I knocked on the door and I asked, preacher came to the door and I asked him if I could use his telephone. He was good to me. He was kind to me. He didn't really know that that was the beginning of a year-long pursuit of Jesus in his word for me. A year later, I came back to that church. I walked in to that building that I had broken down in front of. In a sense, I was broken down again. And I knew immediately that there was something there. Now, I could tell you that that year of spending where I was reading the Gospels, Jesus was changing me. But you got to know that for a burnout hippie to walk into a, a little country church and to have those people embrace me, I didn't know that was possible. They loved me like I was, well, like I was a child of God. And I didn't even know that yet. It was the start of a beautiful relationship with the body of Christ as they nurtured my young faith. And uh, I don't know how they did it, because uh, I, I brought a lot of people into the church that I'm sure they, they weren't sure if, it was, if, it was, if this was going right. <laughs> but they loved everybody. And in fact, at that church, later my brother and my, my sister was baptized there. My, well, my brother and my daddy was baptized there. And, and it became the... A church for for decades even though I had to leave the church has always been there I have loved the church from the get-go it's always been a part of my life and it's always been a great part of my life now, I'm not saying there hasn't been conflicts I'll bet you if you've known Jesus and and been a part of his kingdom that there's probably been some conflicts I know there has been some conflicts over the years, but what I've learned over the years is that most of the conflict was in me and that it, God even uses the conflicts in order to bring about the changes in, in life that he's trying to, to heal in us. So I love the church, but my favorite church has is, is been here. I, I had ministries for Six years, I believe it was, as a youth minister. I, I did a church plant for eight years, but I've been here for 15 years. And uh, i got to tell you that this has been the greatest experience of my life, to be a part of you guys and to have you guys a part of my life. God has opened his word up to me in ways in the last 15 years that I could never have dreamed that he would do, and it's because of you. Thank you for being my church. Thank you for letting me be a part of the body with you. Thank you for helping me to be a better husband, to be a better dad, and to be a better preacher. Now, we're going to take a few minutes. I want you to I want to hear some more of these stories because I think God is doing an amazing job. Sometimes we don't maybe we don't hear it. Maybe we don't get we're not invited to tell the story. You won't see this on Nine News, but you should. Because Jesus is alive and well and he's working in his church. 
Let's listen to some of these stories together. I used to come with my sister and Trent when I was home from college, few and far between. I remember always feeling extremely welcomed and Don would always say, hey Kelsey, and I was so impressed that he remembered my name. The sermons were consistently powerful and always seemed to be exactly what I needed to hear. Fast forward a few years and my older son had just turned three and my younger son too. And I said to myself, we need to go to church. We had gone with my parents a few times and I seemed to live in the nursery, gratefully hearing bits and pieces of the sermon over fights and cries. So now I decided I needed two things from a church. I needed to hear God's word in totality and I needed a place to take my children so I could listen. I decided on YCC. I remember thinking back to the warmth and welcome of my rougher college days and always feeling like Dodd and God were speaking directly to me. So we went. I wrestled in my two toddlers and was pleasantly surprised to hear the loud music the whole introduction. I didn't have to shush them or worry if I was a disruption, just felt comfortable. Like this was exactly where I was supposed to be. When Don announced to take the littles downstairs, I was so nervous. I remember carrying them downstairs and seeing familiar faces and other kids that my kids had played with and being greeted by <clears throat> a big bubbly smile and bouncing curls. And I thought, thank you, God. This is exactly where I am supposed to be. I am most thankful for Don's powerful messages and Jennifer and Dennis being exactly the people you would choose to spend time with your kids. I look back, I looked back at a gratitude journal and thank God for them four times. I have never fully thanked them for being half of the reason I picked this church. So thank you so much and Arlo and Harvey really miss you. <laughs> um, exactly a year later, then we started going to church. Um, YCC and in the YCC communion message, they said Harvey's name and told a short story about him. And I remember feeling like we were truly a part of this church family. It's full of real people looking for a relationship with God. And I love the women's group and Shauna never fails to pick a life changing book. When Jackie asked me to do this, I did not want to put myself in front of the camera, but I owe it to this church so much and I love it and will forever be grateful for all that it's given to me. I grew up in the church in Morristown, Indiana. And uh, it was very important to us because um, we loved to go to church every Sunday and it was a special place to go. My mom and dad worked hard in that church and my dad was very important to that church. And um, it was any time that we left to go on vacation, dad always made sure that we had the church to go to somewhere because he knew that church was important to him and to his family. And so church has always been a special place for me. Over the last few weeks, as we have looked at the body of Christ through Don's sermons, it's really made me think about what I like about going to Yuma Christian Church. I feel like in the past when we haven't been as religious about going to church, I didn't necessarily hear God's living word as much as I do when we're consistently attending. I feel like you can really feel God speaking to you through Don's sermons and through talking to other members of the church. Another thing that I really think is important for us is we have four kids and I think Dennis and Brian and Jennifer and Carrie are really great influences on my kids and they really get a lot out of children's church and I really appreciate that. And I also love Don's way of preaching. I think he does a really great job of reaching and communicating to people and, um, and sharing God's word. I think being involved with Yuma Christian Church has helped me grow closer to God and I really appreciate the fact that we've been able to film Don's sermons. Um, and yeah, I just really love our church. I think that going to church in uh, the body of Christ is import, very important. I also think it's in God's will. Hebrews 10.24 reads, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as we are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. 
I think that's hits it the nail on the head pretty good because I think when you go to church, you kind of put yourself in check and it helps you, to, the Holy Spirit works through you and helps you to lead a better, um, more focused life on God because I know myself personally, when I don't go to church, I find myself tending to stray away from that and I, uh, I'll start cursing more, sinning more easily and when you're held accountable through a community of people, it tends to make you follow in Jesus's footsteps easier and better. I also really like Don's sermons and the way he preaches and I feel like the Holy Spirit works really good in our church through for me personally anyway and I like that it helps give our kids a really good foundation on how to live their life and and and, and to walk in Jesus. I love to hear stories about God's working in our lives. I love to hear stories about how God's working in His church. We don't talk enough about that. Now, this will conclude our series for this for the for, for now. We're going to get into a series uh, starting next week uh, about what lies men tell to themselves and lies women tell to themselves. We're going to get into an eight-week series to, to kind of help us to be better husbands and better men and better wives and better women. Um, but I have enjoyed this series so much, and I thank you for sharing your story. Together, let us lift up God's church take it out into the community. It is our mission to pour this grace into the world, to be a place where people find grace. That's what changed your life, I'll bet. And it's what's changing, will change the life of our community. So let us bow our heads and let us just thank God for his church. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the seven weeks that we have had to study and to to kind of dream and ponder and 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 to look in deep into scripture and to see what what it means to be the church. I thank you God for this word picture that Paul gave us. It it teaches us so much. It it makes something that maybe we make too complicated very simple. We're a part of your body. And in doing so God it changes us. It gives us a a place to to grow and to serve. It gives us people to grow and serve with so that our personal relationship gets gets stronger and, and, and more personal. And, and so our relationships with others get stronger so that we become better at family and better at kingdom and better at serving our community. So use us, Father, in the coming days, weeks, and months to be your church in wherever you planted us to serve you. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you for all of it. In Jesus we pray, amen.